Hello again from Bear River. I'm starting at the edge of the emerging wetland here. Um, a tree fell across the trail up there, so I had to climb up. Come on. And across we go, this little creek right here. It's cute. And it runs there, and that connects to the river. And there's a pool that runs in this dip right here. And here we come out. And there's no shortage of large woody debris here. This is the area I was filming before that has the everything running through it. And this is the wetland that's emerging. These plants are the pioneers, They're the willows. They did battle with the miners. The miners kept digging them up and the willows kept growing roots and rerooting themselves. And uh, the miners dug a lot of holes that I think might have helped. But anyway, the willows won. Nature won. And if you look here, this is what I talk about all the time. This is the water running through an emerging wetland, trapping sediment and building up the substrate. Within this wetland are numerous little pools and channels where a large variety of aquatic animals can grow and thrive. And it extends up that way, and I'll walk up that way. But you can see here how the surface water and the groundwater are intermixing, and the habitat is being created by the flow of the river, the life-giving river, carrying sediment and creating biodiversity in what was once this here, a big gravel pit of the bones of the mountains, of the genocide of the native people, blasting away the mountain with hydraulics. And here's, the gravel has landed, and even now the river is trying to repair and build a wetland on the debris of the hydraulic mining age. And of course, some of our miner friends have dug big old holes, which actually further traps water and creates micro environments for frogs and the like. So here is our emerging wetland with its little holes and its channels and its places where little fish and frogs and other animals can live. I can't wait to see salamanders and frogs and all kinds of exciting things in here, but as we know, NID does not ramp, so for all we know, this will be drained and stinking like dead fish in the future. However, there is ramping requirements on the way. It's just really unfortunate that an agency has to be forced to do what's right for the environment rather than voluntarily doing it. I think the general manager's heart is in the right place, but she doesn't have the staff that's committed to stewardship of the river. They're coming out of the old mindset. We got ours, and we'll short the environment all that we can, and we only do protections if we're forced to. That isn't the new way of thinking, and that is not the new way of engaging with the natural infrastructure. So anyway, isn't this lovely? Look at this. Emerging wetland. And we didn't even have to build it. It's building itself. And amazingly, this emerging wetland is downstream from where beavers have chosen to come and live. Here's one of the holes that the miners dig. And here is an emerging wetland. When the weather warms up, I could see this teeming with animals. Although, in all truthfulness, this will be transformed into this 
if a certain irrigation district has its way. So we just want to tell them that at 360 CFS, we have a wetland, a beautiful wetland here on Bear River. And there are other places on this river where this kind of environment exists. There's flat gravel cobble areas that can trap sediment and create wetlands and store water. This whole drainage can store water. They don't have to dam it and kill everything and take everybody's homes and destroy our park. We can store water here in a natural way using the natural infrastructure of the land. And you know, they have mitigations for large woody debris and mitigations for this and that. Nature will do it by itself if we facilitate that, if we encourage it, if we support it, and not make harebrained decisions based on our own selfish interests. Oh, Metakweasen, we love emerging wetlands.